A young woman enters a race to win her freedom from oppressive poverty, but finds a much different set of challenges than the ones she was expecting in Runtime. That's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. It is one of the Tor.com novellas, and it's also a review I am doing in conjunction with this week's Diversathon. So thank you all for joining me. Now, a lot of what gets marketed as dystopian SF these days, the problem with a lot of this stuff, is that most of it isn't really dystopian SF. I mean, sure, you get the cliché dystopian settings, right? These dime-a-dozen bleak Orwellian oppressive fascistic futures. But really, they're only being used as, as a backdrop for what is actually a superhero story. The horrors of life under an impersonal and heartless monolithic government only exist so that some beautiful teenager can tear it all down with the power of her trusty bow and arrow, or whatever she uses. A runtime, the debut Tor.com novella from S.B. Divya, does not offer that kind of pat reassurance. Instead, it emerges as an uplifting and hopeful tale in its own way, mashing up the sensibilities of current dystopian trends with an old-school cyberpunk aesthetic, it tells the story of Mary Margaret Guinto, or Mermeg for short, kind of awkward, a young woman scraping by as a nightclub bouncer in this very rough, near-future Southern California, in which America has established what is essentially a caste system, requiring citizens to become licensed at a cost, naturally, that is out of the range of the poor, in order to enjoy such benefits as health care and even education. Mermeg is determined to bootstrap herself out of this dead-end life by participating in the Minerva Sierra Challenge, a grueling cross-country foot race in which contestants wear these cybernetic exoskeletons controlled by neural implants. Naturally, Mermeg cannot afford the high-end gear that the more popular corporate-sponsored contestants use. She has had to MacGyver together her own rig out of discarded spare parts. But she's got it working, and she is determined to at least place in the race, which would open up a whole host of opportunities for herself, as well as her can't-stay-out-of-trouble brother. Now, I would have liked to have spent more time roaming through this richly textured world before the actual race starts. Divya has imagined a complex society with a whole lot going on in regards to politics, ideas about gender, economic stratification, all that sort of thing. It all really could have held my attention at novel length, and there are more than enough ideas for one. This system that pretends to offer a, a path of advancement to citizens who are underprivileged and marginalized, but which is, in fact, designed to keep them in their place, is painfully relevant, and it warranted a lot more detail. Plus, Mermeg is a believable underdog protagonist, and not some idealized superheroine, in constant conflict with a mother who's blithe acceptance of the way she has been assigned a, a meager lot in life fills Mermeg with a combination of sympathy and contempt. But once the race is underway, covering miles and miles of coarse desert and mountainous terrain, the story moves very swiftly and offers up a bunch of unexpected dramatic complications. Divya actually applies her own experience as a runner to these scenes, making them feel extremely tactile. Mermeg, who is understandably cynical about many, many areas of life, but also a bit naive about some others, is going to have some encounters on her journey that challenge her morally and force her into making some really tough decisions about what she is willing to win and what she is willing to sacrifice. And no spoilers, but I will say that the ending was very, very satisfying because it not only follows logically from what has come before, but it does not play out and resolve the story in the expected way. So yeah, I really, really liked Runtime but I would have liked it even better had it been a full novel. Because the world is so richly imagined, and Mermeg is somebody that I really, really liked getting to know. Somebody I genuinely wanted to succeed, because it was very, very clear she was always willing to run that extra mile. And that is all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180. Everybody, thank you as always so much for joining me and for your support of the channel. Now remember, the most important thing, these are reviews, you will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit the like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please sub if you have not done so. That is what helps SFF 180 grow as a channel. You can also support the channel at its Tee Public store, where there are shirts and related merch. Okay, so until I see all of you awesome people next time, Happy reading.